Welcome to Veterans Air, the Veterans Hour. I am your host, Douglas B., and you're listening to Veterans Air, your source for news, talk, and uncensored commentary here on your Lone Star Community Radio. Um, as always, uh, a little housekeeping when we start. Um, you can contact Veterans Air through our website at www.veteransair.us. Um, you can leave us an email. You can find us on Facebook. You can even text us, text, in the studio on our Google phone, 936-344-3083. This is our Memorial Day show. Um, as we do every Memorial Day, topic is, what is the cost of the sacrifice that veterans have made for your liberties. Um, now, if you're curious about what Memorial Day is, you can listen to our past um, podcasts on Facebook, YouTube, on our website. And we've gone through many different shows talking about what Memorial Day is, how it got started, and why we do it. For a veteran, Memorial Day is more than the traditional backyard barbecue, the start of summer, the day at the beach. For a veteran, Memorial Day is a solemn, um, solemn holiday, and it's a commitment that we veterans make to our fallen brethren. Um, I am going to do our traditional Memorial Day commentary um, later in the show, but I wanted to talk to get some interviews. In the studio today with us, we have the commander of VFW 4709, Raquel. Did I do it right? Sure. Raquel Glass <laughs> yes. and the junior vice, Marcy Phillips, along with her lovely, neglected, never gets any treats, service dog, <laughs> Benet. Um, welcome to the show. Thank I'm glad you. that you're here. Um, as everyone knows, I'm a life member of the VFW 4709, and I do whatever's going on that month at the post and try to get it out to you. But I have not had the VFW on in a long, long while. Um, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring some of the officers in, introduce themselves, tell you what's happening with the VFW since we've been closed for so long. So let's get straight to it. Commander? What the hell is the VFW and why do I care? <laughs> the VFW is the Veterans of Foreign Wars. <laughs> why do you care? Because we care about all of our veterans. <laughs> we love them. We want to do more for them. Oh, so it's a service organization. That's correct. For those who didn't know, it is. It is the largest veteran service organization that we happen to have in our area. Um, we got hundreds and hundreds of members, uh, hundreds and hundreds of lifetime members. Um, and it is a very dynamic post. True. We have at the post the traditional cantina. Correct. Um, and we have a hall yes. that serves two purposes. Um, serves for bingo. We're going to mm -hmm. talk about that. And you can also rent this out. Absolutely. Something that just came out in Wednesday's meeting is that if you are a lifetime or legacy member mm -hmm. of the VFW, you can use the hall That's for correct. free. That is correct. For memorials. For, For memorials. memorials For in memorials. particular, yes. We can, we, and we can actually, if there's any need for assistance, obviously we're there to help assist with some of that as well. Outstanding. So. That's why I love service organizations. <laughs> um, how do you become a member? And why would I want to be a member? Well, to become a member is fairly easy, isn't it? Very no. easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paperwork-wise, it might be easy, it, but you had to have served in a foreign war. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it's very easy as far as paperwork. So paperwork, you just come in, you fill, it, fill out an application, bring in your DD-214 to prove that you've served in a foreign war or as far as um, serving in Korea or some other um, qualifying campaign. Right. Now, as far as um, the qualifying part is not always easy. Yeah. That part is not easy. So the war part is the as hard far part. as war, <laughs> <laughs> that part's not the easy part. You've got to serve your country, um, and that's not always easy. So as far as the service to your country, 
that's the amazing part of the VFW is that we all come together. You have your comrades and things like that. And the beautiful part about the VFW is the comradeship. Um, and we love that we can all understand each other, um, whether it's talking with each other um, or not even speaking about what we've been through. But we're here together and we are here for each other. And that's the beauty of it. And so it's easy to join. But the qualifications to join isn't always the easy part. <laughs> we just had lunch at the Honor Cafe. And uh, as I've been telling you for like forever, if you haven't been there, you need to go. Definitely. Yes, um, because you'll be surprised at the food um, at the Honor Cafe. You would not expect that here in Conroe. Mm -hmm. um, but we're anywhere. having this conversation <laughs> um, um, talking about how veterans talk to non-veterans as opposed to their brethren veterans because when veterans talk um we can say a lot by not saying much mm -hmm. um just because it's the shared experiences if you find yourself lacking the comradeship that that you used to enjoy while you served in the military the vfw is a good place to come back to that. Um, the VFW has changed. It's not the VFW of your dad. It's not just a bunch of old guys in a smoke-filled <laughs> bar drinking at 9 o'clock in the morning. Our bar is not even open at 9, is it? No, <laughs> and it's and it's non-smoking. We have a beautiful smoking area that's it's available for people who do smoke, but in, the canteen is non-smoking now, right. um, which allows us to care about the health of our veterans who don't smoke um, and also take care of the the veterans who do smoke so it allows us to take care of both um what's the membership fees these days forty dollars forty dollars that's correct but the the most There's valuable membership is a lifetime membership yes. um brother johnny purchased my lifetime membership I per passed that on and purchased Dangerous Dan's lifetime membership, and he's passed that on and so forth and so forth. Um, and I've put this out on previous shows, but I'll put it out again today. If you want to join the VFW and you don't have 40 bucks, Veterans Air will buy your membership for your first year. Just go over to www.veteransair.us slash newsletter, fill out the little form, I'll contact you get your bona fides, and you'll be a member of the VFW. Um, oh, that's, that's sweet. Awesome. Oh, that is awesome. That. Well, all that's the memberships amazing. that I've turned in, that's, that's, how, they those, came that's how they got to be members. Oh, uh, thank their, you. Their, their membership for the first year. Um, I never knew that. We love you, Dougie Fresh. Oh, <laughs> you're hanging out. You're hanging out with Ashley too much. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Um, we have to. She's leaving us. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Can't believe it. I know she's going over to the liberal state. <laughs> What's new? Bless her I know. heart. No. <laughs> Bless her little heart. Um, the I, I don't know how to say this. So I'm not a veteran. Can I come to the canteen? Yes, actually, you can. Do you want to explain that? Or? We do have the opportunity now for folks that are not actually dishonor. Or I mean. Dis I'm sorry, trying to say disabled, but uh, not veterans can become members of our canteen. So we've opened it up to first responders, that being police department, firefighters, EMTs, as well as their immediate families. So we have that opportunity now to offer that to the community um, and they are allowed to come in. And also, they can actually bring a friend in. As long as they are there with them and they sign them in, they can actually come into the canteen and enjoy it. Also, veterans that don't qualify for the VFW. Correct. Like That's true. Veterans that... Um, honorably have, discharged. Yeah, veterans, that are yeah. honorably discharged. Yeah. I, I put that out for you, Chuck, because of Chuck. your wife. Uh, um, I, I, Chuck's a, uh, a sheriff's deputy. Okay. Um, and his, uh, his wife, Nikki... Um, is is a big time um, American Legion supporter yes. because her dad is the commander or past commander of the American Legion of yeah. an American Legion post out there in Colorado. Awesome. He's a friend of mine. Um, so 
Chuck, get Nikki. Come on up. Yes. Yes. Do Chuck that. and Nikki. Come on, come Nikki. Come see us. Um, <laughs> Memorial Day is coming. That's correct. It is. So I, I put this out on the last show, and I want to put it out again today. Um, remind everybody, Vet Fest 2021 mm-hmm. is happening May 1st um, behind the Western Wear in Montgomery. Um, I'm not sure if I got mm. that right. Hold on. No, Magnolia. The, Magnolia. Magnolia. Yeah, the, uh, the, the general just, sent, Wears, right? the general just sent me something. Yep. The Outback general. Western Wear, Magnolia off of um, Huffsmith? Dobbin Huffsmith. Yes. Mm-hmm. If my, if my phone brings it up, General McNabb just sent me something. Here we go. Saturday, May 1st, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Outback Western Wear in Magnolia. Um, free admission and free parking. Live music all day. Local craft beer and wine. You guys want to take bets who's going to show up for that? <laughs> uh, barbecue plates. Baby veteran. No. <laughs> avail- <laughs> available from uh, Baker's Whiskey and Rub. There's going to be a VSO Village for Veterans Resources. Um, I'll we'll be, be there, there, of course. And so will and we. We will be there. We're, we're sharing a tent, aren't we? Yes, we I, are. I believe we'll be there with you, yes. And, and you're bringing the table and chairs, right? That's correct. Yes, and you'll bring the tent. I will bring the tent. Hey, by the way, Dick, I just I couldn't find our old banner, so I just ordered a new one. This is Veterans <laughs> Air and Lone Star Community Radio. Surprise! <laughs> um, we, we had a really nice one. Yeah. Um, when we do like locations and stuff, I'll come mm-hmm. out with them. And and I had a really nice one. Mate, can't find it. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Hmm. Um, there's a kid zone with an, with inflatables, petting zoo, dunking booth, and who doesn't love a horse kissing booth? Now I cannot confirm this. I I don't <laughs> love a horse kissing. I, booth. I, I, I can't confirm this, but the rumor is that General Hummer. Is going to be in the dunking booth. Uh, yes, and I think there's a gentleman named Ralph that might be in the dunking yes. booth. Also. Ralph's Ralph going it too. Yes. Really? Yeah. Outstanding. He's our yes. judge advocate at the VFW, so yeah, yeah. you're if, out there. If you Get ever him. wanted to dunk a Marine general, yeah. now is your chance. <laughs> yeah. um, dangerous Dan, um, get little girl, get the kids, come on out. I will go into the bouncy house with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had some stuff that we were going to talk about. Well, may I say one thing? About, Absolutely. Because you mentioned Memorial Day. Um, I just wanted to mention the Buddy Poppies. Because we will be out on Memorial Day um, handing out Buddy Poppies. Mm-hmm. They are something that we give away on Memorial Day. And so you'll see us out in force. And just so everyone knows what Buddy Poppies are, if you'll look up the poem Flanders Fields, um, it will explain to you what the Buddy Poppy is, what it signifies. It's from World War One. Um, and just helps people remember our fallen. Yes. Um, but they are assembled by disabled veterans in VA hospitals. So if you will just kind of look for us out there, out and about in the community on Memorial Day, you'll see us out there handing out buddy poppies. And feel and who free doesn't wear to the buddy poppies? Exactly. Feel free to take one. They don't cost a thing. Yes. All we want you to do is wear them in remembrance yes. of all our fallen soldiers. So. Yes. My my service dog wears one all the time. Does she? I've never noticed. Yes, yeah. it's on her vest. She sure does. Uh, every time I see her, she just tells me how neglected she is. Yes, she does. <laughs> you don't notice the junk in her trunk? She looks so <laughs> neglected. Oh, my gosh. This child is fat. <laughs> and after our conversation about cookies, I don't think I'm ever going to be with a dog you see. Um, this poor thing. <laughs> I, I wanted to to bring something up. Um, and this was the, the, the reason why I invited uh, the officers over today, is the VFW has been closed. We've been closed because of COVID. We didn't need to close. I have to tell you that. Um, being closed hurt the veteran community and the community as a whole. But there are some pieces of legislation out there in the state house right now that are being voted on to stop that from happening again. You guys know anything about this? I do. I was just at the Capitol on Monday. When I know. I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rep it, Marcy. <laughs> so we've got, um, in the Senate, we've got SB 989 and SB 1493. Um, so I really want you guys to take a look. Senator Buckingham and Senator Springer have done a great job 
of really helping us get some things um, out there. So it, just go ahead and go to capital.texas.gov. Um, do some bill lookups. There's actually twin bills in the House that aren't moving quite as fast. Um, but take a look at those bills. Read the text. I can even make it easier for you. Take a look at the show links above or below or wherever they happen to show up. You will find the links to those bills Thank and the you. text they include themselves. Because if you're like me, um, you hate Googling something and finding 10,000 pages and not the page that you're looking for. Thank you. So I love I, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see, I even, I, see, I print them out. Very nice. oh, Nick, awesome. he, puts, he puts them on the, uh, our Facebook page. Um, <laughs> Thank because you. this goes out not only on the radio, if you guys didn't know, but we're also on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, SoundCloud, or wherever you get your quality podcasts. And I'm glad that you're wearing your service caps because this show is also rebroadcast on um, Conroe City TV. That's Channel 12 for you Sudden Link subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to, wanted no, to put that out, you. that the links were there. Um, and these bills are going to do what? So these bills will help us. Um, they're, they're written just a little bit differently, um, but what the goal is is to help us be recognized as service organizations and not as bars so that we don't get lumped into um, the problem that we got lumped into last time where the governor said, okay, all the bars have to close, and that's the problem that we had last time was they said, okay, well, VFWs, y'all are bars, and you got to close. So if a VFW had a bar in it, you were just closed for good. And the problem that we had was several VFWs across the, the entire state got closed for, for good. I mean, they lost so much revenue. So, um, they lost not just revenue from a bar standpoint, but think about hall rentals. Think about... Um, everything that goes on in a VFW hall besides a bar, um, you have to pay your bills. You still have to pay electricity. You still have to pay everything, even whenever you're closed. All of those bills still have to be paid. Well, you can't. Um, and, and not only that, but your veterans can't visit with each other. You can't have meetings. You can't have the camaraderie that your veterans need whenever your doors are shuttered. So we couldn't even have meetings. We couldn't take care of each other. And the really sad thing is we didn't even know who needed what. Right. And so whenever these bills got proposed, you know, whenever we went around and we talked to all these different senators, they went, are you kidding? You couldn't even meet with each other? And we were like, yeah, we couldn't even take care of the veterans. We didn't even know what they needed. And they were like, oh, that's not acceptable. So these bills got drafted. They got put onto the floor. And from what it looks like, you know, budget and finance was like, yes, um, you know, this makes sense. We didn't even have anyone opposing them during testimony. So it looks like everything's going pretty good. So See, that's what's great about the VFW 4709 here in Conroe, because um, as far as I know, we are physically, as building-wise, the largest in the area. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the canteen of the bar is very, very small part of the building. Correct. Very small. Um, the, the, the hall is huge, absolutely huge. It even has a new commercial-grade kitchen in it. Um, during, um, was, it's Harvey, right? Harvey. Yes. During Harvey, um, the Friends of Conroe, um, teamed up with the VFW, and all the support that came out of the uh, Friends from Conroe, all the good work that they do, where was the stage out of? Our hall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Initiated in our hall. Um, without the VFW being open in our community, there is a lot of good services that are happening community-wise, not just veteran-wise, that can't be done because we had to shut our doors. Right. And in the middle of this pandemic, we could have definitely done that safely. Right. We have masks, we have hand sanitizers, we deep clean the hall, all those good things. Correct. Right. Um, so I think these bills are very important. If you're wondering who you need to call, again, look at the links above or below, you will actually find who your representatives, who your state senators are, and who the representatives are. I gave you a link to look it up for your specific district too. Right. They can just go in there and put in your zip code. It's going to tell you who to call. You want to know what's really unique about RVFW is um, RVFW sits right in the middle of Conroe, and our S Senate district is split where Senator Nichols 
is north of us and Senator Creighton is south of us and they both sit on budget and finance. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there and I'm, and I, I mean, I follow politics like you wouldn't believe, but I'm sitting there and I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm like, hey, um, just so you know, um, our VFW falls right in here and our, <laughs> and so I'm explaining it to both of their offices and I'm like, you know, it's really important to know that our membership is very important to both of you guys because right. we, you know, we really need our post open. Our members are very important to y'all, not just from a voting standpoint, but from a health and services standpoint, from a community service, you know, from a com camaraderie standpoint. And they get it. And they care about us. Just so you know, our senators care about us and our representatives. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, Will Metcalf, he cares about us. He's amazing. And Whenever I went up there and talked to him, he's a great guy, but they still need to know how much, don't forget to tell them, but they still need to know how much we need them to care. So don't forget to call them. Can, can I tell them about the, the stove and the mattress? Absolutely. So let's talk about giving to the community. Listen up if you were affected by the winter storm in February. Do you need a gas stove? VFW has one. Do you need a queen size mattress and box spring? The VFW has one. You don't need to be a veteran. You just need to have the need. Contact your VFW. The VFW is a veteran service organization, but our VFW is a community organization. Um, you will find that the leaders and members of your local VFW are also leaders and your members in your community. Um, what worse are we going to talk about? You had a, you had a list. Um, well, I wanted to let people know we have activities um, that we do. You, uh, you oh, mentioned, let's do bingo. Let's yeah, do bingo. You, you mentioned bingo. Just so you know, we have five sessions. Bingo's amazing. You guys should come out. One of the things I want people to know about bingo, it's charitable. Yes. So when you play bingo, you're helping veterans. You're not just helping veterans, but you're helping the whole community. But you're helping veterans. So every time you play bingo it goes into what's called a charitable distribution. So a portion of what comes back to, um, well, not even a portion, all of what comes back to us goes into charity. Mm -hmm. So that charitable um, distribution eventually gets put into um, some type of charity, whether it's um, part of it went to the VA last time, mm -hmm. um, it went to, I can't even remember where all it went to, um, Gosh, so many different places. It goes to so many places. So many I can't different. even put it all out there because But I can't not remember. just veteran places. Right. Correct. Not just veteran places. Um, all over the place. So bingo, come play and help other people. That's right. Because you're having fun, you're hanging out and you're helping people. So I mean it's a win win. Um, we have And the bingo hall is safe. Yes. Because we only have three chairs per table. Correct? Yes, correct. We are yes. still spacing We're still practicing on out. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and we have fabulous food. We have what's called oh, the Urban Grill. Yes, y'all. Their fried catfish is my favorite. Um, <laughs> but they have chicken fried steak. They have oh my gosh. Balls. Oh, oh yeah, the booty balls. <laughs> um, anyway, the, like everything is so good there. Um, but bingo, bingo is super fun. We have poker on Friday nights. You have to be a member of the canteen to play poker. Um, that's on Friday nights. We have Bunko first Monday of every month. Mm -hmm. um, man, there's so many activities. Queen of Hearts. Um, Queen of Hearts, a that's raffle. That's a biggie. Yeah. Um, that is played on um, during bingo. That hasn't started back up. That just ended. Somebody yeah, we had just a won it. Not long ago. And <laughs> so it'll start Pick back up again um, soon. But we have raffles at Bingo all the time. Um, we shouldn't call them raffles. They're um, giveaways. Just giveaways. Door Just prizes. Thing, door no, prizes. the door prizes. We got yeah. to we, 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 we gotta, we gotta yeah. do the Steve thing. Right now we have a Kindle, I think, that we're yeah. giving away. Yep. Kindle yep. Fire. Kindle Fire that um, we're giving away in Bingo. And then... Um, we Gosh. just upped those door prizes, too. Yeah, we have another new one that's coming out soon. Yep. So our quartermaster, Steve... Um, hard-working individual. Steve, oh, yeah. you are never going to be replaced because, <laughs> damn, <laughs> have you got it under that. control. And nobody oh. wants your job, Steve. <laughs> nobody wants your job. Great job. So, so um, we voted to up the door prizes um, at the bingo sessions. So we're not giving away cheap stuff. 
It's all, all good stuff as a door prize. Um, so you show up, you're playing bingo, you may win that door prize. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, bingo is, um, now when I was with the, the Legion, I attempted to get bingo started in, in the Legion. Mm-hmm. Um, bingo is a wonderful way to support your community's charitable giving. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the law says that the VFW is conducting bingo. Well, they don't get to keep that money. Mm-hmm. That money goes into a special fund, mm-hmm. and then when they get so much money in it, they have to dis, dis, uh, distribute mm-hmm. that money to other 501Cs in the mm-hmm. community. That's correct. Not just veterans. Right. Um, so if you have a 501C or you're involved with a 501C and you want to get in on some of this bingo charitable, you just need to give Kelly a call there and go, hey, I'm a 501C. <laughs> hey, get some more money. And exactly. <laughs> can, uh, uh, can I become a 501C? Can I get some money? Well, That's not quite how that works. Kind of it's not allowed. And a lot of times <laughs> it has to be voted on. It's not just yeah. like, hey, you know, it's not just like we pick right. random from right. the office. It, a lot of times it's voted on who, who Everything it Everything the VFW do, does so. pretty much is run by its the, members. And yeah. I'm so. glad, glad you brought that up. This is a member-driven organization. Correct. We meet twice a month. Mm-hmm. The first Wednesday and the second to last First Monday. and third, third. Wednesday. First and third month. Wednesday every month at 7 p.m. at the VFW um, on Seaman Street. If you don't know where that is, you've driven by it. It's the place with the big helicopter Correct. up front. <laughs> That's where we're at. Um, and and, and if, if you're sitting at home wondering, what the hell do I want to do with myself now that I'm retired, Um, Go see the VFW. There are literally a ton of projects that need to be done in the community. Mm -hmm. And the VFW can serve as the clearinghouse. I want to help somebody out because I'm an electrician. Nine times out of ten, the VFW knows who to call. Um, Can the VFW solve your problems? No. No. The VFW can help you solve your problems, but it will not solve your problems for you. It's not that type of organization. We're a fraternal organization? Yes, correct. A fraternal organization. Fraternal, charitable, historical, (laughs) patriotic, and educational. (laughs) That's in our chair. That's our charter. Historical. uh, You know, you sit around um, and talk to the other veterans in there when we have our group meetings or we're having a, having a benefit for somebody because we have a ton of benefits. Correct. Um, <laughs> and you start talking to these guys and these ladies and um, you realize the amount of history that you didn't know. Mm-hmm. You thought you knew. Right. But here's your chance to sit down and talk to somebody who actually lived that history. Yep. And I, I think I put this down on the last show about uh, Honor Cafe. Um, my wife and I were over there, and there was an older gentleman with a younger kid in his arms, I'm assuming grandfather and, and grandson. And he's at the Honor Cafe um, with his grandchild in his arms, and he's pointing to displays on the walls, pictures and biographies and whatnot, and he is teaching his grandson the history of what it means to serve. And the VFW does something very similar because we're involved with the Boy Scouts of America. Mm -hmm. Um, We are living historians, if you will, because we each have a story of what happened when. Because what you read about, some of us actually lived. Um, What else do we want to talk about? If I could, on the history side of things, um, we do over 20 programs a year. Correct. And we post them on our Facebook page every time we do one. So please follow us on Facebook. Um, VFW the Facebook post. link is either above or below. Um, if you would follow us, we would appreciate it. But one of the things that we want you to know about are our programs. So every time that there is a significant um, battle or historical event in military history, we do a program on it. And at that program, we tell you the full history about it. We teach you why it's significant. And we want you to know about it because history tends to repeat itself. And um, 
not only that, but we want to honor the people that went through that. Absolutely. And we want to make sure that our children know about it, our grandchildren. We want to make sure that those people that went through it have an opportunity to speak about it if they're still here and living. Um, you've had the opportunity to speak at some of those mm-hmm. um, events. And it's just near and dear to our heart, as I mentioned in the charter. It's fraternal, patriotic, historical, and and educational. (laughs) And we want kids there. A lot of times people don't even think to bring their kids. And we're like, come on, you know, bring the kids, bring the kids. We let the kids do the Pledge of Allegiance beforehand usually, and they love it. (laughs) We want them there because it's so important for us to pass that on to the next generation, just like you mentioned. And my kids, you know, I had them make... um, this little board for POW and MIA Day, and we learned so much more than I thought we were going to learn. Um, you know, that there was a dog as a POW. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, but, yeah, there's so many neat things that you can learn. Um, and it's just really rewarding to go through that. And I think that, you know, I want to put it out here right now. You're all invited. Everybody, come out. Join us. Um, for all of those events. Thunder there. and lightning. If I flood, you're yes. going to come over to my house again, right? Yes. I will help you <laughs> we'll again this time. Next flood, I'm there. Um, <laughs> it was but, so bad. <laughs> but yes, please join us for those events. Um, those are really important to us. Correct. But as far as youth goes, we also have scholarships. You mentioned the Boy Scouts. We have mm-hmm. a Scout of the Year program. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, what we call Voice of Democracy. That's for ninth through 12th graders. Mm-hmm. And they actually speak um, an essay that they write. These and are amazing essays. Yes. Amazing. I was going to say, some of these kids, I'm like, <laughs> I'm floored by. The district meeting, the kid that won district, he's going to be the next president, I swear. And then I, I think we had um, Foy on last year, probably doing so. these. Yeah. So go back and, and look at yes, last year's yeah. podcasts. Um, if you need a scholarship, this yes. is the great way to do it yes. because it's not really difficult. No, not to at write all. these things. And this, they just got released. Patriots Pen is fifth through eighth graders. They just released them now, and they're due October thirty first. So, so get your kids together. Yeah, the, <laughs> the links. <laughs> The links are on, sorry, had to wave in French. Um, <laughs> the links are on um, are on our Facebook page right now. So go take a look at those. Um, yeah. And we, we really love to see our kids do well. As far as Boy Scouts, I just put it out to the district, to Carla at district, that we're looking for some scouts to uh, take some flags from us. We got like four bags of flags that need yes. to be retired. So, so many come on out, scouts. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the, the Patriots pen and whatnot. Um, if you go to our Facebook page, which you guys have the link to, um, we have the Parade of Winners on there for mm-hmm. this year as well. And yeah. it's great to just sit and listen to all of them. It's oh, really cool. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's wonderful, the work that the VFW does. But what really strokes me patriotically wise is, is the history that the VFW keeps. Mm-hmm. Um, as you guys know, I'm involved with two organizations, mm-hmm. PatrioticRestoration.org and Quilts for Vets. Um, and then, Marie, i got to get you on the show. Come on up. Mm-hmm. Um, quilts for Vets, um, they, they, there's a group of ladies that makes quilts um, and presents them to World War II and Korean veterans. Mm-hmm. And the, they put it on their Facebook page, too. Um, the history that you learn from just interacting with these these uh these veterans um i think one of the last ones that they did was the candy bomber and everybody knows the story of the candy bomber Mm -hmm. but hearing him speak about how that started and and what it grew into there's so much more history there than what you learn in the history books right and i like to think of the vfw as preserving that history absolutely I want to um, give kudos to Commander Kelly real quick. Um, She's on the State Honor Guard, and she's also on our Post Honor Guard, and that is something I could never do. I want people to know about our Honor Guard. Um, If you have a veteran that in your family that passes away, um, and they, you want them to have honors at their funeral. There is a process that you go through in order to get that. And that is to let the funeral home know that you would like, 
if you would like our honor guard team to do the honors. You don't have to call the post directly. The, the best thing to do is to let the funeral home know yes. that you want us to do it, and then they will contact us um, through our contact our honor guard captain, um, and then we'll we'll get it scheduled for you. But our honor guard team is amazing, and I could not be more proud of them. And they they just do such an amazing job. They travel all over the place. They do it for free. They yeah. are volunteers. They volunteer so much time and put in so much effort. And I am just amazed by how, how many hours they put in. I, I can't remember how many hours last year. It was thousands of hours. Um, but I'm really proud of them. And, and I mean, it gives me chills because I could never do it. And so thank you for what you do and how much time you put in. Not just as Spoiler. the commander. <laughs> thank you, commander. Um, it, my listeners know, um, last year, last October, um, I laid a uh, dear friend to rest in Arlington. Yes. And um, I got a chance to work with Persian Zone um, up there to, to lay her to rest. Mm -hmm. um, the emotional commitment that somebody on these honor guards, whether it be your local VFW or it be you know all the way up there at Ar Arlington, the emotional strain to do this is something that I personally could not do. Okay, we all know I can't do it physically, but the amount of how do I put this? The amount of of Composure. Composure required to to do this ceremony is more than I could do. Because um, you're not just, you know, standing there saluting, firing off of a couple of rounds. It is, it is, it's a ceremony. And there's countless hours that the honor guard goes through learning to do this properly. Right. If you are a veteran out there, and you're not a member of the VFW, you should be. And if you want to be involved with this, the Honor Guard is always looking for people. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. We always need volunteers on our Honor Guard team. Can't ever have too many of us. Right. <laughs> what else do we want to talk about? Um, well, I just wanted to mention our, on the community service level, um, we do, I mean, you, you know like how much... We do, like, the nursing. You want to talk about the nursing homes? Oh, we just recently oh, yeah. had gone to a couple of the local nursing homes um, for the veterans that are there. We took um, some new books. Well, they're recycled books, new to them, <laughs> um, so that they could add them to their library there so they have things to read. We also included some, like, word searches, you know, game books and things like that to keep them occupied. We took them some cookies as well. So. Cookies. Yes, everybody loves cookies, right, Doug? Dick, I cookies. ate your cookie for, for dessert, by the way. I had them at lunch. <laughs> Doug's a two-handed cookie so, yeah. guy. Little, Just even little things like that going out in the community and just, you know, we can't interact with them as much right now because of COVID. There's still, you know, things, there are restrictions. So we were able to at least drop that off to them. And the folks that work there, you know, are definitely telling them that they're from us. So. Yeah. Did you guys get your COVID shot? I did. I got my COVID shot. The VA gave it to me. I got the Johnson and Johnson. Oh no! And, um, um, How's your brain? <laughs> well, wait, wait. If you have not gotten your COVID shot and you want to get a COVID shot, contact the VA. The VA will give you your COVID shot, not only you, but your spouse, caregivers, and so forth. Correct. Just contact the VA, and you can get your COVID shot. Now I got the Johnson and Johnson, and um, uh, I got it up here at the he, Conroe. He has yes. two Johnsons. I have two Johnsons, yes. Um, this is a family I'm, show. I'm a veteran. I apologize. <laughs> this is what they meant about how veterans... This is, yeah, can, this like, is what they meant about other. veterans. This Sorry. is why they don't take me Sorry anywhere. About them. This, um, is, <laughs> this is why veterans aren't allowed. I think it's failing out. No. I, need, um, I can, can do the news. It's soggy. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so, Johnson so, and Johnson. Yeah, they, they gave me the vaccine, and I asked about the side effects. Mm -hmm. And apparently, the lot that I got, I'm getting Wolverine claws. Really? Oh, that's awesome. That that'd be like totally awesome. What is that called? Antimony? You or must have knocked what? somebody down in line to get um, the first one. <laughs> oh, they haven't come in yet, but I'm I'm hopeful. 
I forgot to talk about the auxiliary. Look, talked yeah. about the auxiliary. How much time I got on the half hour? I'm on 40 oh, minutes. Oh, crap. What? All right. Oh, my gosh. All right. We, we're we're going to have to end this because I have to. But Join the auxiliary. Yes. Don't if you're, talk, if talk you're about the spouse. auxiliary real quick. If, if you're an immediate family member of a veteran that qualifies for the VFW, you should join the auxiliary. Thank you, and have a great day. <laughs> yes. The, the, it's no longer the ladies' auxiliary, is it? No. no. It's the VFW no. auxiliary. And I want to thank everybody um, yes. in the auxiliary because... Believe it or not, the auxiliary is is. They're a it's backbone. The, it, it, it's the funding arm of the VFW. Um, <laughs> they do a lot out there to raise money from the VFW um, and to support us. So we want to support them. Yes. Um, since we I have them. you both here, yes. the commander and the junior vice commander, um, when I remember. When I'm putting together my shows, mm -hmm. I'll go over to the Facebook page and I'll find out what the hell's going on. Sure. What's right? But as you guys on? know, I am always traveling. Yes. So somebody, hmm, Marcy, <laughs> needs to start cross-posting over to the Veterans Air oh, page. Shit. Okay. Because um, oh. they'll... The, I think the, I have access too, don't I? Uh -huh. oh, this, show, this show has four <laughs> listeners. The show has four listeners and Petra's one of them. Um, Hi, Petra. But, Hi, Petra. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and... and um, um, Ashley says she listens too, so soon I'll only have three. Um, Hi, but we have a whole bunch of people following it on Facebook and YouTube and whatnot. Excellent. They listen to the podcasts. Good. So please take the stuff from the VFW and okay. put it on Veterans Air. So what you're saying is we're falling off of our jobs. Well, no, what I'm saying is if, if, you're, <laughs> yeah, if, if you're expecting me to do it, because I am a member, active member of the VFW, um, you'd be wrong. I, I keep forgetting. <laughs> oh, I want to mention one more thing, okay. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my commentary. Um, the VFW 4709 is a very active post. Yes. Um, it's not the post where you just sit at the bar, drink, and smoke because you're not smoking anymore. Um, <laughs> so we, much more than a bar, y'all. So much more. We do things. If you're looking for something to do, you'll be surprised on how many things that we do that you don't know about. If you want to do something, believe me, the VFW can use your help. Always. May I say something? Absolutely. If you are looking for a post that you can join and not do anything, you can also join us because the strength in numbers is something that helps us from a lobbying standpoint, both at the state and national level. Correct. So from that standpoint, if you are a veteran that's eligible to join the VFW, just join us because... It will still help us from that standpoint as well, and we would greatly appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, I want to thank you both for being here. and give you. you. Give you our new swag. Oh. We have swag Ooh. now, so when you come out to VetFest, stop by. I'll give you your very own thank nice. you. Um, koozie. Okay, thank I'm going to put my phone in it so it doesn't get as wet in the rain. <laughs> I hope I rolled up my windows. Um, but th <laughs> <laughs> now everyone's looking. I think I see some hail coming down, too. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you both for being here. Thank you. Um, tell thank us you real for quick. Us. If I wanted to talk to the VFW, how can I give you a call? You, can you guys call. don't remember the numbers, do you? Neither well, did they I. No, they recently they just changed, changed the it. VFW's <laughs> phone number, so we will get that number for you. Stand by. Yes, <laughs> Let's see it is. Quicker. She's probably quicker because oh mine's not working. It is. 936-703-3316, which is what I thought it was, and I second guess myself. So give him a call. Somebody will answer the phone. Probably Steve. He's always there. The, the best is way hard? is because our hours are no one, not no one, sorry. We're not there 24-7, so the best way is to message us on Facebook. Yeah, that's a good way to get hold of us. Honestly. Yeah, because Marcy's always on Facebook. All right. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Thank you for being here. We're going to now segue into um, the Memorial Day program. We're going to, I'm going to do my, my commentary um, known as Grandpa. And uh, Dick, can we, can we set up to do that? Set up to do taps? Cool mm. beans. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Dick. Have a good one. Stay dry. I hope my windows are up. I'll go check it. Thank you. I'm ready when you are. We do taps first. I mean, do you want me to kill the show? No. All right. We can just go. We can just go. Go ahead. Um, 
as has become tradition in the past few years, um, I do a I do a little reading, something that I wrote. And uh, last time I did this, I got some comments. Is this based off of a real guy? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. Um, his name was James Britton. He was uh, a veteran, and he was the chief of police in the small town that I grew up, um, where I grew up. Um, I have fond memories of uh, Jimmy rousting me out of the woods with my guys and confiscating our beer. Um, and, and when my father passed on, uh, he was good friends of the family. My father passed on, he actually married my mother and uh, I got to know him more as a person than as the chief of police confiscating our beer. So this is entitled Grandpa and it's about Memorial Day. Let me tell you a story of a man I know. I'm sure he has a name. Everybody has a name. It could be Robert, Thomas, Jimmy, or even Phil. But everybody around here just calls him Grandpa. Everybody in this small town knows him. Jimmy can fix anything. Can a WD-40, Craftsman wrench. If you needed something, it was always Grandpa. You needed your field mode, Grandpa would show up with his tractor. Times get lean, Grandpa will show up with eggs, a chicken, and a bag full of veggies from the garden. And would you please help him out? Because those damn chickens are laying too much and the garden is producing more than he could possibly use. Grandpa is getting long in the tooth. I've never ever seen him out of those jeans, those beat up shore boots, and that beat the hell hat that he always wore. At his age, he never expected to be raising a child again, but here he is raising his four-year-old grandson. Grandpa calls me up one day and asks for a ride to the airport. I arrive early because he taught me, if you're on time, you're late. He was just getting dressed as I walked in. He was slipping on his shirt over his airborne tattoo. I've seen that before, but he won't talk about it. It's like him, old and faded, but you can still make out a 173rd airborne. I stop and stare because I've never seen him in a suit before. Shut your pie hole, he says, you're catching flies. These are my traveling clothes. As I pull away from the airport, I wonder where he and his small grandson are going. But I was raised better than to ask. If he wanted me to know, he would have told me. He boards first with his grandson, and he settles down into first class. He removes his jacket, rolls up his sleeves, loosens his collar, and holds his grandson in his lap. Others enter, and they look at him, an old man, long gray hair and a ponytail, small child in his lap. Some stare, some just look, some nod respectfully when they see his tattoo. The flight attendant comes by and offers drinks and snacks. She asks his grandson where he's going today. The child answers excitingly, Grandpa's taking me to see my daddy. The flight attendant smiles, and brings the child some milk and strong black coffee for Grandpa. The attendant asks if his son lives in Maryland. Grandpa says, no. No, my son is with my men in Virginia. They got a nice plot of land out there, and someday I'm going to settle down there. The flight lands, and they take a taxi. They stop first in the mall in D.C., Grandpa walks, holding the child's hand, up to the wall. The child asks, is this where my daddy is, Grandpa? There's tears in his eyes as he picks up his grandson and holds him tight, and he whispers, no, he's not here, as a tear rolls down his face. The child in his arms kisses the tears from his grandfather's withered face, saying, there, I made it all better, didn't I? Yes, child. Yes, he did. Another taxi ride. And the child stares out the window as it rolls through big gates and past perfectly manicured lawns. They get out and walk across those lines 
with their rows upon rows of simple white markers, and they seem to stretch as far as the eye can see. They stop at one and stand before it. The child is silent. His grandpa taught him not to interrupt when adults are talking. Grandpa looks at the stone and says, Son, I've brought your son today so he can meet his father. The boy looks at Grandpa and asks, Is this where Daddy is? Grandpa kneels beside the boy and says, Yes, this is where your Daddy is. You see, your Daddy was a soldier like I was. He left you to go fight a war because his country said they needed him. Your Daddy died but he was a hero. And this place, this is where our country lays our heroes to rest. But your daddy won't be alone. And he won't be lonely, for he is surrounded by thousands of other heroes. Why, just over that hill, my friends are there. They were heroes too. The little boy asks why his daddy had to be a hero. His grandfather thinks for a moment, takes the child's hands in his and says, your daddy didn't have to be a hero. He didn't want to be a hero. None of the mommies and daddies here wanted to be heroes either. He just wanted to love and stay with you, but sometimes loving and protecting someone requires that daddies do what they don't want to do. You know, you know what we do when that coyote gets into the hen house, right? How we hunt him down so that all the other hens can live without worrying about the coyote coming back? The little boy just nods, tears in his eyes. Well, that's what your daddy did. There were some bad men that wanted to hurt good people. And your daddy and a lot of other daddies and mommies they had to leave to protect their children from the coyotes. Sometimes, when you stand for what is right and just, it takes a big sacrifice. The little boy sniffs mightily and looks deep into his grandfather's eyes and says, when I grow up, I'm gonna be like you and daddy. I'm going to protect you from those bad men and coyotes. Grandpa hugs the little boy, says a prayer to God and to country to not let his grandson grow up to be a hero. This is the price some are willing to pay for all of our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Some have taken that for granted. So Memorial Day reminds us of that, the sacrifice to be paid. On May 3rd of the 1st, this country observes Memorial Day, the day set aside to remember our fallen and what they stood for, the ideals that they died for. This Memorial Day, I ask you to take a minute from your backyard barbecues and day at the beach and just hug your family and friends. Get to your knees and pray to whatever God that you hold dear, for sake, for, that you hold sacred rather, for the wisdom and the understanding. Wisdom and understanding to know that others died to fulfill the promise of America for you. These men and women stood against things that some are throwing around like candy at a parade today. They stood against racism. They stood against bigotry. They stood in places like Normandy, Rwanda, the Balkans, Iraq, Afghanistan, and so many others. They stood for the right to worship God as you want without fear of persecution and death. They stood for the right to speak your mind against the government. They stood for what it means to be an American. America, I task you, yes, I task you, to overcome what I see you becoming these days. I task you to stop the bickering Stop the persecution of your neighbors. Stop being Republicans. Stop being Democrats. And start being Americans. Please do this. 
before you tear this country apart. Memorial Day is a day of remembrance. Stop and remember what it means to be American. Perhaps you should reread the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution, for which these brave men and women cherished so much that they were actually willing to lay down their lives to protect and defend. They were willing to lay down their lives to protect, to protect and defend so that future generations would have them and to cherish them like they did. These brave men and women shall not have died in vain, but it's up to you, America, to ensure they have not. We're gonna, we're gonna do taps or angel flight. I, I played taps throughout the whole thing. Oh, you did? You're a good man. Mm -hmm. can, can we do angel flight? Yeah. Um, Rodney Foster, if you don't know who he is, he's a country and western uh, singer. And uh, a couple of years ago, um, uh, he and Daryl wrote a song called Angel Flight. If you ever wondered what happens to a military member when they fall, this song will explain it to you. C-130 out of Fort Worth town I go up some days I don't want to come down Well I fly that plane Call the angel flight Come on brother you're with me tonight Between heaven and earth you're never alone on the angel flight. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. I love my family and I love this land. But tonight this flight's for another man. We do what we do cause we heard the call Some gave a little but he gave it all I fly that plane Call the angel flight and Come on brother you're with me tonight brother, you're with me tonight Between heaven and heaven you're never alone on the angel flight. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. Come on, brother, I'm taking you home. Well, the carpet's quiet and the stars. Feels kind of like church in here tonight It don't matter where we touch down On the angel flight it's sacred ground When I fly that plane Call the angel flight Got a hero riding with us tonight Between heaven and earth You're never alone On the angel flight Come on, brother, I'm taking you home Come on, brother, I'm taking you home Come on, 
Welcome back to Veterans Air, the Veterans Hour. Um, I hope you listen to the song. Uh, I, I'm hoping that it put Memorial Day in perspective for you. Um, I guess I should do a shout out. I have to shout out, give a shout out to, uh, to EMW Productions, who makes this show possible by paying me while I'm actually doing this. Um, so let me give a shout out to, uh, to them. Um, East Meets West Productions is a full service business and marketing consulting firm, helping vets start and fund their businesses for over 25 years. For more information, call 361-904-0044. Um, and there are some good people down there. They will help you get funding for your business. Well, I guess that wraps up the show, but remember to tune in on June 1st at 1 p.m. Uh, I'm not sure what it is I'm going to be doing come June, but uh, I'm sure it'll be entertaining. Um, I want to leave you with, I want to leave you as a, as, yeah, I want to leave you with a song from our friend uh, Sailor Jerry um, called I'm Going Anyway. And uh, you can download the song from her website uh, at Sailor Jerry music.com that's jerry with an i um while we're listening to this let us remember our brothers and sisters in uniform that are today still standing in harm's way to stand for our freedoms and for our liberties if you are wearing the uniform i want to tell you thank you i want to tell you i'm proud of you until next month stay safe and stay vigilant to leave, but the first to go. 